Hey guys, this is another episode of Design, Develop, and Share. I'm David Anderson, and today I thought we'd talk about a programming platform called LeetCode.com. And these programming platforms are one of many out there, so this isn't necessarily the only one. So I'm on the LeetCode.com landing page. It's not too interesting. They have some trending posts. They've got some news. You can catch up on what kind of contests they're running. They don't really have a whole lot about their website themselves. But if you look at their website description, they're the world's leading online programming learning platform. Whether that's true, I don't care, but it is a good platform. So let's dive in to what this is about and what this platform has to offer and, and really why I like it and why I think you should try it. So at the top, the first place that you're really gonna go and the only place I'm really gonna talk about in this video is the problems section. And this is really why I was driven to this type of platform. You get to a point in your career where you wanna challenge yourself, you wanna learn new things, maybe you wanna do some things that aren't part of your day job, or maybe you're lacking in certain areas in software development, and you just wanna challenge yourself. So this is where it gets fun. So these platforms typically will offer categories of problems and literally sometimes thousands of them. So in the case of Leet Code, they have 1,117 problems that you can solve that are just algorithm based. And these platforms typically provide a couple things. So Leet Code categorizes the problems based on difficulty, easy, medium, and hard. So that's the first thing that you can look at when you're looking through these. The second thing you could look at is the acceptance percentage. So for this first problem, to sum, only 44.3% of all submitted algorithms are accepted. So what does accepted mean? So their platform means if I submit an algorithm given a series of inputs, they're gonna run my algorithm, which is typically a function, through thousands of test cases, and it must pass 100% of those test cases to be fully accepted. So that's why you would typically see a lot lower numbers of acceptance because you might have to make multiple submissions by the time you find a solution that truly covers all edge cases. So some of these problems are fairly interesting. Some of them do have solutions to them and we'll show that here in a second. But I've done a few, I've discovered this website about a week or two ago. And some of these are very straightforward, two sum, add two numbers, and they sound straightforward on the surface, but add two numbers, for example, how hard that could that be? Well, only 31.4% of people have their solutions accepted and it's categorized as a medium difficulty. So on the surface, they sound easy, but they actually are fairly challenging. So let's go ahead and look at this one and show you what the platform has to offer. So the first thing you'll notice is on the left-hand side, they give you the problem description. So you're given two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. These digits are stored in reverse order and each of their nodes contain a single digit add the two numbers and return it as a linked list. You may assume that the two numbers do not contain any leading zero except for the number zero itself. So they're pretty explanatory in the problems. They also provide you the constraints that you must work within in this description. And then they will often give you examples of inputs and outputs and the explanation for how they came up with that data. And you can use that information to help you write your algorithm. So. For example, on this one, they've given an input of two linked lists of the, and these are a single linked list where there's only one node and that is a reference to the next node in the list. So you have a value of two with the next node being four, the next node being three, plus a linked list where the first node is five, next node six, next node four, the output is seven, zero, eight. And so you can infer that by, you have basically four, plus three is seven, you have six plus four is 10, which would be zero, carry the one, and then finally you have five plus two is seven, plus the carried one is eight, and then reversed gives you a value of seven, zero, eight. And then they show you kind of an explanation of that down here. So you can see that they also have 2.9 million submissions for this problem and only 900,000-ish have been accepted as full solutions to the problem. And again, a full solution is one where it's ran through all test cases. 100% of their test cases must pass on your algorithm for it to be an accepted solution. You can also see how many people like or dislike. I find that kind of funny. 
some of these problems have a lot of dislikes, partly because I feel they're more difficult and that's why people dislike them. Sometimes the problems could be a little better in their descriptions, but they're typically not too bad. I haven't actually come across one yet that's so awful that I couldn't solve it. So the right hand side is basically the code editor. This is where you're gonna write the algorithm. And based on the language that you choose at the top, so if you're a C++ programmer, you can do that. Java, Python, Python 3, Ruby, JavaScript, PHP. Most of the probably most widely used programming languages or most popular languages are available there. And they give you the boilerplate for that. So I have been writing C-sharp for 10 plus years. So that's my language of choice. My second choice might be some JavaScript, but they give you some boilerplate. So basically they'll give you a function boilerplate that you need to fill in and they'll provide you the inputs and they'll provide you the output. And there is some code that might be inferred in this editor as well. So you can see up here it's commented out, but if I was to run this code, it will actually work for this custom object called list node that represents a node within the linked list. So they provide that, you're just gonna fill in the blanks and then run this against your uh, all their test cases. So the second thing over here is if a problem actually has a solution, and I, I like this and I dislike it, they will show you oftentimes one or more solutions to the problem, also with fairly detailed explanations to why that solution works and how it works. So for the exi this example, we talked about the carry and how the addition works. That's basically the first approach is using math, uh, basic addition with carryover. Um, to do that, they explain the algorithm, they explain kind of things you need to look for, you know, just like how you would sum two numbers on a piece of paper, we begin by summing the least significant digits, which is the head of the L1 and L2 length lists. Since each digit is in a range of zero to nine, summing two digits may overflow. That's where you get your carry, so on and so forth. They give you some pseudocode. So they're fairly detailed explanations and they oftentimes have examples and oftentimes they also have code. So the thing I like about this is if you're having a lot of troubles solving this problem or you've never solved it before or maybe you just have no idea, you can come in here and actually learn what that solution is and, and how to approach it. They also often talk about complexity analysis, which is something that they measure. So when you submit your solutions, they will actually measure the runtime in milliseconds of that solution. So they talk about that. And oftentimes for problems that have more than one solution, they will show you multiple solutions to the problem. And they'll also explain why one is maybe slower or one is maybe faster and why one might be the recommended solution. So for this problem of adding, uh, so to sum was the problem that we clicked on. The solution actually has one, two, three potential methods that are different, but ultimately the latter two are faster than the previous. And that's what they're kind of getting at. And there's example code for each of that. So the downside though, that I don't like about that as a platform is I can come in here and basically grab the solution before I've ever even accomplished it myself and I could submit that. And it looks like I'm just a fantastic programmer. So for me, I like the challenge of at least trying it on my own before I go out and find the solution and use that because I want to understand it and I want to exercise my problem solving capabilities. And it's a measure for me of how well versed I am in this area. And for me, it's just a, it's a growing exercise. So that's kind of the pros and cons of that. Uh, the third tab over here on the platform is the submissions tab. So this is where, as you actually solve problems, you actually can see every submission that you've provided. So if I actually click on this first one, which was my very first attempt at this, you can see it ran in 532 milliseconds. And that runtime is a combination of all test cases that your algorithm has run through. So it's not the average or minimum or maximum time frame your algorithm has ran in. And then the memory usage of that algorithm. So if I click on this, the cool thing is they will actually show you your submission. So there were 29 test cases that this algorithm was run on. They will actually show you 
where your algorithm is compared to other submissions out there. So for my very first attempt, it beats 11% of all submissions. And then the memory consumption beats 58% of all submissions. And they rank that within the language that you've chosen. So they don't compare a C-sharp submission to a Python submission, for example. And then you can actually see the code that you submitted for that particular submission. And you can do that for each one. So you can see my first one was accepted, my second one was runtime error, third, fourth, eventually I cut that runtime in half to 264. I can go see that for that submission, I beat 74% of all C-sharp submissions, but my memory consumption was lowered down to 23.34%. And then there's my, uh, the different code there. Now, one thing I don't like about leak code as a platform is I have found that these runtimes vary and they can vary greatly by 30 milliseconds, by 40 milliseconds, or by five. So there's not a lot of consistency in that runtime. And the runtime also differs when you actually run your solution. So over here on the lower right hand corner, here's the code editor, right? I can, that's where I can do my work. I can actually run that code and it will give me a runtime of 320 milliseconds. That's not necessarily being run through all test cases. So you have to understand that the inputs that are provided, in this case, uh, we had an input with an array of 2, 7, 11, 15, and then nine, and my output was zero, one, expected by zero, one. So it succeeded, but it only ran against one test case. So when I submit that, it's gonna have a very different runtime value. So you can't use that to, as an indicator of how fast it's gonna to be total across all their test cases, which I believe is how their, their system is working. But it does give you at least an idea. So along with that, we're in the result tab. When you run your code, that pops up. The left side is the test case tab. So you can change the inputs that are fed to the algorithm. So like in this case, the function takes an integer array of numbers and then a target number. And so I can feed those values to my function and I can change those. And I can see what my algorithm does based on those different parameters. And I can, that time it finished in, and there you can see it in 120 milliseconds, which is very different. But that's more likely because the output was nothing and there was actually a, an error that occurred in my output. So the editor is actually kind of cool. Um, you can play with that, submit. You can submit as many as you want. And the other thing I'll note at the top is if you want to go see what other people are doing or discover different ways to approach the problem, they have a discussion tab over here on the right-hand side, and you can actually find a lot of people discussing it, approaches to doing it faster, questions on how to improve code. It's, it's basically just a forum at the end of the day, so nothing too crazy there. So that's about as far as I've spent on the platform My, myself. I've looked around some a few other areas. You can do mock interviews. They do have contests. They have discussions. They've got a store where you can collect coins by solving problems or even submitting problems of your own and you can redeem those for like t-shirts and keychains and things like that. But the main thing for me and hopefully you if you're looking at a platform like this is the fact that they have thousands of really interesting problems to solve that might sound easy on the surface but are actually fairly challenging in writing a true uh, algorithm that might be really fast with low, low complexity. So I'll do a, I think what I'll do is a part two where we'll actually solve one of these problems and I'll, I'll do a, a screencast of that. We'll walk through the process and look what that's like. And I'll, what we're going to do is probably take this one here, this problem number three, longest substring without repeating characters that has only a 28.6% acceptance rate. And we're going to do that. I'm going to show you I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to explain it just like they would in their solution tab. I'm going to do that in a, in a part two. So let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, if you like leadcode.com, give me a like and a subscribe below, and we'll see you next time.